Hello viewers, welcome to another episode of Brave Namibia, where we celebrate both ordinary and extraordinary Namibians. Our first stop today takes us to Volfus Bay, where Leandre Mower meets Mario Tanisep, who was left a quadriplegic after a motor vehicle accident. Mario shares his passions, his experience with COVID-19, and how he believes that disability is not inability. If you're on the lookout for your daily dose of inspiration, don't go anywhere as Mario Tanisep from Morfish Bay, who is a quadriplegic, tells his story of courage. You know, the accident that changed the course of my life occurred on the 24th of December 2011. I was on my way to go spend his first Christmas with my then eight-month-year-old baby and I was involved in a tragic car accident and my cervical spine, which we call the neck spine, I broke it twice and that's where I became paralyzed from neck downwards. Life after a spinal cord injury is a complete change of life. You know, it's a complete new thing. And to date, you know, even many, many people struggle just to come to the point of coping and making adjustments. And similarly to me, the journey was very tough. And, you know, I came back, at the time of my accident, I wasn't permanently employed. So I came back and I had to erect a shed, a ghetto at the back of my aunt's house. And after that, I thought, oh, yes, maybe the society with a bit of pity and stuff like that. No, one will find help, you know, houses, employment and stuff like that. Only to come to know that even my society, family, community needed education on how to reintegrate people with such a uh, um, injury. And then I took it on, took it on myself after countless uh, job, uh, unsuccessful job interviews. And I took it up on myself to educate. Mm -hmm. Educate companies, schools, community, family uh, about these things. So already 2013, I started visiting schools, you know, to talk about disabilities. I started visiting companies on a voluntary basis. And I took it up upon myself to say, uh, within Quisop Moon and Narawa, you know, I will voluntarily spend weekends of my life yes. just to go to families impacted by disabilities, just to talk about disabilities. What is a disability? How did it come to be? What can be done? to improve the livelihood of this person. And I've been advocating, you know, motivational speaking for the past years to date. And, and, and yeah, that's how I've been taking. And that actually also helped me to, to learn many things about my disability. For example, as a quadriplegic, you cannot use your hands to type, to answer the phone. So I had to come and go out of the box and learn about other uh, assistive devices that can help me type, that can help me approach companies and say, this is what I can offer instead of just trying to get handouts. Despite being a quadriplegic, this hasn't stopped Mario from living his life to the fullest. In 2020, Mario was the first quadriplegic to skydive in Sokopmon. Mario is a very strong advocate for disability does not mean inability and he strongly feels that people living with disabilities can be given the same opportunities as those who don't. You know, um, once we give people with disabilities, living with disabilities, a chance, you will be surprised at the number of skills that are hidden. Once you give them the platform 
for example saying okay our employee uh, instead of paying him out let's uh, renovate this office put in a room make it spacious make the uh, toilet wheelchair friendly let's bring him back to the company you will be amazed at what that person can offer because your skills your knowledge everything you uh, uh, picked up over the years it doesn't go with your disability you still have it so disability is not inability give people with disabilities a chance and you will be amazed at what they can offer what they can add yes, yes. now mario what did you do before the accident you know before the accident i was a young guy i was only doing uh, courses in psychosocial support counseling hiv and aids awareness and i was a relief teacher at Quisap Moon Primary School and, and still so I, I wasn't even in a permanent setting still trying to find uh, my way around the life that's when my accident happened so I was already busy with social uh, stuff before the accident. Mario is also involved at the Sunshine Kids Center where he teaches children with disabilities basic computer skills. Uh, basic computer skills you know ranging from four years to the eldest which is maybe 29 years uh -huh. so the aim is just to teach them some art and with age i can see what basic computer skills i can lend them so for the bigger ones it's to type mm -hmm. set up their own email addresses you know and and that for the little ones painting drawing and so on but we also need a bit of update in terms of because these are outdated Windows 7 um, yes. 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 so you need Windows 10 programs to download parcels and kiddies play games so these kids can also learn those stuff but we cope in we cope in and they do a good job like majority of our people Mario was also not spared the brunt of the COVID-19 pandemic he tells us about his experience well towards the end of July last year I started showing symptoms mm -hmm. but now with the underlying factor because when you are paralyzed neck downwards there is this thing called autonomic dysreflexia mm -hmm. that's the sudden onset of constant high blood pressure you know and, and aided by that you know my blood pressure went to the extent of the cardiac arrest and, 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 and stroke what could actually get it because it's that I, and my temperature was just knocking in the 40s, so it was very scary. I went to a hospital, still very scared, still, you know, anxiety, everything surrounding COVID. But the first day I decided, you know, it's a mental thing. Yes. That's where I'm also coming into the public, the government, counselors, everyone out there to, to, to focus on the mental, mental health and well-being of people, you know, whether it's people that have lost loved ones through COVID or the ones battling me because the mental side is important because I told myself instead of lying on my bed and waiting for the doctor I'll ask help to go on my wheelchair to be helped to do setups you know to do the bubble pep uh, uh, breathing exercise yes. and when the doctors came around 8 o'clock in my room I'm like no I did this thing I did the exercise how is my blood pressure? When can I go home? So my, my, my mindset through the underlying factors help me through. That's why I'm encouraging everyone out there, you know, once it hits, you know, let's not go about who gave it to me, pointing fingers, you know, let's go about underlying factors or not. I'm going in this with a positive mindset and already you know, I'm not praising myself, but when I contracted COVID, I already saw myself in years to come, motivating and giving stories of hope and healing because I know I was going to defeat it. Mario is currently advocating for a number of changes. Yes, you know, at first, uh, instead of just complaining, I applaud my government also of the many steps they have taken you know whether it is applying for jobs to study yes they already catered for people with disabilities all that i want to go an extra mile is uh, especially the 
social like the integration plus in terms of jobs and stuff like that they are so they, they so not much a person living with disability can do you know sometimes when you go to the mall uh, you see that everyone stays at you you know yes. and and i just want us also to be engaged at panels you know at platforms just to share just to you know and many times and this is something that i'm saying uh the, the blame or the fault mustn't just fall to the community or even to the government it is just allow us to educate uh, you guys and once you know sometimes people act in a certain way because of the unknown because of the fear because of being curious so invite us you know, let us share, let me tell you about this is quadriplegia. It means A, B, C. Then you have the knowledge about it to welcome me. And that's the most important thing that I can say to the government. Let us educate, you know. So service delivery, everything can just work. Yeah. Mario has quite the number of plans up his sleeve that he hopes to achieve so. You know, there's so much, you know. I just, I thought of my journey, but not only about my journey, that of many uh, persons, people living with disabilities, I want to use combined stories to write, is it a manual or something like that, that can be used in hospitals, libraries, schools, that can really educate the nation. Forever, for example, something like, um, Namibian version. Mm -hmm. What is a disability? How does it occur? And how can you give services to people? Such manuals and stuff like that. In five years time, I want to write so many things that can really open eyes. Like for example, few years ago, I went for a job interview at Irongo Red. Mm -hmm. um, I just came in. At that time, I, w I wasn't having my assistive device to type and the person that was interviewing me actually asked me ah but how are you gonna work who is gonna bring you all the questions and i think such a book will even educate ceos managers people in positions about disabilities and that's my goal to think in these next five years finally mario shares message of hope my, my message is times look dark. Yes. Frightening times and we in panic. Never in my lifetime have I seen so many rest in peace, in loving memory. We're going to do a drive-by for this person. A set of four family uh, being buried in one day. Never in our lifetime. And, and, and death funerals has, has now become a norm like i remember growing up you know when a funeral uh, is passing by our parents would be go in go in don't stay at today it has become something normal and i just wanna come in and tell my fellow namabians grief has its stages and whether it's denial tell it anger Guilt, tell the point of acceptance. Please take your time to go through these stages and let us be strong. Let us pray, and as a nation, we'll have a good story to tell post COVID. But this is the time to hold hands, this is the time to share our stories to give hope and healing, and I hope. My story was also part of that that strengthened a family, people that have gone through a lot. And let us stay brave, let us stay hopeful, and always have a positive mindset. <laughs>
Our second segment today comes from Tumeb, where Esa Kamati caught up with the Marimba stars. This is the story of a group of teen musicians spreading their message through music. Music is known as the international language, and they say that music unites. In Tumeb, we met a group of boys united by their love for music and an unconventional instrument known as the marimba. The way their faces light up when they play and the energy immediately changes in the room, these teen stars are reaching for the sky. Meet the marimba stars. As a young person, there are many opportunities and a lot of time to find out what your talent is. From sport, singing, and even poetry. But in the heart of Tumeb, we find a group of boys united for their common love of an uncommon instrument, the marimba. secondary school, the group have been friends and used to play together before their mutual love for music brought them to the Arts Performance Center, a home where they develop their craft, learn to sing and unite their musical talent, and to create soothing, classical, local, and even pop sounds that we may or may not know. The group meets daily after school to practice and sometimes performs at the mall or other public places just to brighten up people's day. Once, the group lodged to an open area in Kuvukilan informal settlement and under a marula tree sat down to play soothing sounds for the community. This, they said, was to spread some joy among the community as well as educate the youth in the area about the APC. The boys share not only a love for music, but they also share a common feeling that spending their time bettering their craft and creating their music is a better way to spend their time than being out in the streets. This is the message they hope to carry amongst the community members. Hope to become a celebrated brand in the country. They are available for gigs ranging from weddings, cultural events, and other functions. They also hope to one day collaborate with local and international musicians. The group is led by energetic Kativa Sao, who had the following to say. Okay. 
Performance Center is open for any youngsters that would like to join for a minimal fee paid per term. The Marimba Stars can be reached on 081 62 74 898. Thank you for joining us in today's journey. If you know someone that you feel should be featured on our program, please contact us at brave at nmh.com.na.